Hey friends, welcome back to another CanonFastReviews.com. Uh, today I'm going to turn this 28mm EF lens into a tilt, uh, I guess not a shift, but a tilt lens at least. You never know, it might be a tilt shift. Um, so uh, yeah, but then taking full advantage of the uh, electronic um, aperture diaphragm. Um, so originally what I built was this Polaroid um, bellows lens, got full tilt and shift. Um, and uh, it, uh, this was from a Model 150. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll do a video on this and you guys can copy it. Uh, the thing is though, it was such a long lens that um, and then the aperture was around an f8, I think, and so I wasn't super happy with it just because um, I wanted a wider lens to really show off the tilt shift effect where this is like a portrait lens, more tilting off the face and whatnot, unless you got really far back. But and then at, at f8 or whatever it is, it's not the greatest, and it was fairly soft. I wasn't a huge fan of it, um, but it, it's fun. It works. Um, I use it every once in a while. Uh, it doesn't come in my bag all the time, though. Um, then more recently, you guys might have seen me build this. This was the uh, 50 mil uh, 1.8 lens. Um, so I took the nifty 50 and fit, nifty eyed it even more. Um, I'm really happy, really, really happy with this lens. Um, I got a lot of uh, tilt off of it. It actually um, tilts more than you sh are what I would like to use. Like I actually have to s tilt it less because it's so dramatic. Um, and I got the full aperture, I can go to 1.8, I can stop down to f16 or f22 or whatever this thing does. Um, so this is just an ab absolutely incredible lens. And um, I use it all the time. However, again, I'm still not, I still realize that I need to go wider. It's just um, because if I want to shoot a whole reception or something at a wedding, um, I have to get so far back and sometimes you're outside of the tent and now you're shooting the tent. Well, I want to be under the tent but still shooting what's under the tent and tilting it off. Um, so this is fantastic. I use this all the time for portrait and whatnot. Um, but I still want to still like I went from the Polaroid to this and I'm still wanting to go wider. So finally um, I got my hands on a totally damaged um, 28 mil. The focus is totally locked. This is really tight so it probably would be repairable but this is my excuse not to repair it and I'm gonna turn it into a tilt shift lens hopefully tilt shift and if not shift I don't really care at least I get a tilt out of it and I can do some really cool portrait and wider shots um, so I actually took this off because I'm not gonna use it I know that and I put it on the other lens and repaired that lens and sent that one off on eBay so I got full price out of the other lens so you're probably watching this video wondering should I keep watching this did it actually work Yes, it did. It worked really well. I was actually uh, very surprised how well it actually works. Now, this is going to be perfect for all my wide-angle stuff, but uh, and it and it, it it did. It replaced my 50 mil 1.8, uh, but not for portrait. Uh, I'll definitely be using them hand in hand. This is going to be an amazing little team. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. So now you can watch this lens. This is the 50 mil 1.8 uh, Mark II, and I hacked that Canon up. And uh, you can watch that in the description box. I'll put a link there. And uh, this lens is absolutely perfect for doing uh, tilt shift for portrait stuff. But but a, but a 50 mil is not a portrait lens. Look, it works super well. It's super easy to use. Yes, it is a portrait lens. <laughs> but um, but it definitely uh, this won't be my portrait lens. One thing that I was shocked by was about how much tilt you can actually get with this lens because I was expecting to get uh, with a 28 mil and then at 2.8. I wasn't expecting to get a whole lot of tilt out of it, um, but I found just like my 50 mil, I'm actually tilting too much, so I gotta back off a bit, and that's a good thing, because um, I can also stop this lens down to 3.5, 4.5, whatever I wanna do, and uh, still get tons of tilting effect, and that gives me even sharper images. So that was a really big surprise about how much tilt I can actually get out of it. Now, I've only had this lens for uh, built it for about a couple weeks now. I haven't had a whole lot of time to shoot it, but it definitely works amazingly well. It's extremely sharp. Now, one of the best things, I love the color too, but one of the best things uh, about this, what I was actually extremely surprised on, no matter how much I tilted the lens, I wasn't getting vignetting. 
Now, with this lens, you do get a bit of vignetting, you gotta watch, but I couldn't believe how little vignetting I could get with this lens. Like, it's nearly no vignetting at all, which really makes this, oh, so much uh, more amazing. So, I just love this lens now, but, um, and then, and then uh, you get nice ghosting and flare. Like, I like the lens, the 2828 in general, so it made a perfect lens. Um, now, is there some things that I would change or do differently? Yes. Um, one thing is, I you'll see I do the double size sticky tape. Uh, now, I was in the California sun, and um, I felt like it was starting to get a little bit uh, um, uh, slimy, like the, the glue was melting. And it actually wasn't, it was just kind of getting a little bit squishy, but I ended up peeling it all out, and then I realized that this boot's so tight anyways, I don't even need to glue it or anything. Yeah, and I, I just kept shooting, 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 and I never pulled the boot back. Now, I eventually will glue it, if I ever get around to it. Um, uh, I just haven't had a need to do it, and I mean, I've only had this lens for a couple weeks now, um, built, so uh, eventually I will glue it, um, but I haven't had a need to glue it yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I probably wouldn't do the double size sticky tape in here. Uh, if I did it again, I would just go straight to gluing it, or, you know, you guys might not even need to do anything. It's just, it's so tight on there anyways. Now, I would probably stick with the double size sticky tape in the mount here, because you'll see me doing that. Um, so I'd probably do that. Um, then the other thing that I would recommend, maybe you guys can help me out on this, is, look at that, metal mount. I was even got the red tab. Woohoo! Um, inside, you know, I'm, I was trying to get it uh, shaved down, so right now, like, that is past infinity, okay? And that's a good thing, and then, of course, we can go to mackerel, or close focus. Uh, could be a mackerel. <laughs> um, but at infinity, that's infinity, or past infinity, even, so that's really good. And, but when you start to tilt it, I can hardly see it, but when you start to tilt it, um, it, it, for a super far away distance, I, I couldn't get that miniature effect I was hoping to get. Um, I don't use the miniature effect a whole lot anyways, but I was just doing it for your guys' sake. Um, but it, at infinity, you don't get the miniature effect as much as I had hoped. Now, at 75 feet or 50 feet, yes, you definitely get the miniature effect. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then, of course, the closer you get with focus, the way I would use the lens is I just like to have the tilt effect, um, tilting stuff off. So um, I'm super excited about that. Um, but now, for your guys' sake, if you guys do see a way, if somebody starts building one of these and you see a way to shave it down even further, can you let me know or can you post some photos or explain to us how you guys, how you did it? Um, because we, I'd love to share it with other people. If we can take this beast and perfect it, because it's already an amazing lens as it is, uh, if we can perfect it and get you guys that, uh, that miniature effect even further, can you let us know where you shaved it off? Um, personally, I don't know where I would shave it off even more without damaging the lens. Um, but anyways, as far as uh, just a regular fun tilting lens, oh, this is the way to go. Look how tiny that is. Oh, what an amazing lens. So, this is the wide angle, and this is the portrait lens, and uh, they are going to be such an amazing team this summer. I can't wait to start shooting them. Um, so, yeah, enjoy. So, the first thing we're going to do is tear into the mount. Um, I want to get all this off. Uh, so, we're going to... There's two screws here. Three screws. Oh, so not this one, but one, two, three. Pull up the mount, and we gotta take this out. So all you do is you jam a screwdriver in between here and the board here and pry it up. So there's a tiny screw here. And it just turns like a bayonet mount. This just lifts off, it's taped on, and there's a screw here. There's In here there's a, um, it's like a brass T-tab, and that runs up and down on the helicoid. There's one screw on there. Looks like that. 
there's this little green ribbon that comes up. Down in there, there's a block and a silver screw. We're gonna do the block, the really big block screw. It's right down in there. Now I'm gonna do the silver one. And there's another silver screw under there. I just tore this ribbon, this green one. I wasn't wanting to tear that, but it just tore. It doesn't just come out easily. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just my focus is uh, so botched. Like, you can't even move. You can't... Well, this one shouldn't move, but the focus won't move. Nothing moves, so maybe yours will slide out. I don't know. But I'm going to keep on doing screws until everything comes out. Okay, so I realized I think that... Normally I can focus, th this is the problem, is mine is seized up, I realize, like, normally you can focus this out to close focus. Um, I should be able to, you know, focus it out, and this would have come out a lot easier, but because it's so close to infinity and it's locked, my focus is boshed, I can't turn it at all. Um, it was just a little bit difficult to catch out. Um, so we're still tethered here, this must run the aperture which is probably the only thing that really matters. That just switched from manual to auto focus. So this might not matter that it's gone. I'll do a test and see what we get. All right, so I uh, hooked the tabs up to a camera and it totally, uh, it thinks it's in manual focus. So that's good. Uh, this is a, uh, it's okay that we just take this out. I was actually gonna, like the 50 mil I did, I was gonna switch it over to manual and glue it, but the camera thinks it's in manual, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't need to have like a, a focus lock or anything, um, or settings changed so it takes photos without it being in focus. It just will do it. Uh, so that's good. Uh, I can move on. Uh, my goal is to get this whole autofocus assembly off. And now I'm gonna start with this green ribbon and check the camera make sure it works, and then take off this orange ribbon. And I'm going to keep checking, as long as everything works, then we're hopefully going to remove this entire assembly. And I'm going to check it. Alright, it works, so now we're going to pull this off. So this kind of stuff we can uh, actually sell on eBay, uh, and you know the with the 50 mil, um, I sold all the parts out. I got the I got this 50 mil. It was the 50 mil 1.8, the second version, Mark II, and uh, I sold all the parts we didn't use. I sold them on eBay, and uh, after the lens, I covered the cost, and I actually made uh, I don't know how much money, a little bit of money from this lens. So I really got a free lens. Um, I paid 10 bucks for the lens and I think I made, geez, I bet you I sold the parts for about 50 bucks or something. So this lens, I'll try and sell these parts. I mean, this lens doesn't break that often, so these parts might be harder to sell, but I'll try to sell the parts and maybe pay for this lens as well. So I'll test it and uh, see if it works. <laughs> 